नमस्ते टू एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग आई एम हैप्पी टू बी विथ यू ऑल टुडे टुडे इज एक्सट्रीमली ऑस्पिशियस डे देयर इज अ लॉन्ग लिस्ट ऑफ सेलिब्रेशन टुडे इफ सम ऑफ यू आर अवेयर today is uh, uh, the full moon day <clears throat> in the month of uh, shravana and uh, some of you probably aware the the whole month that is ending today people do lot of celebrations lot of rituals lot of worship lord shiva and today is the last day today is uh, raksha bandhan those who are not from india for them it is the celebration dedicated to brothers and sisters usually the sister tie the thread in the hands of the brothers and the brother promises to protect his sister throughout the life that is today also today is birthday of lord balram balram is the elder brother of uh, lord krishna and i i believe uh, next week next week is the birthday of lord krishna will be celebrating today is also uh, the world sanskrit day so there are there are there are various organizations in india and i believe all over the world they promote the study of sanskrit language that is also today today is birthday of swami nigamananda some of you are, if you know swami nigamananda is from india whom guru ji accepted as his one of his guru that is his birthday today today also in india especially in south india the state of kerala so they have onam celebrations is a 10 days long celebration so it is also falling today so putting all together it's a very wonderful day today so good to celebrate so uh on this auspicious day let us pray to god and gurus to bless all of us so for the discussion today uh, you have uh, hopefully seen the topic that is given the topic is uh, uh, can we speak the truth can we speak the truth and survive in this modern world is this the possibility exist for us let us think to speak the truth speaking the truth is a uh, one limbs of yoga as you know there are eight limbs of yoga and to speak the truth satya comes under yama so for the students of yoga if you want to progress there is no other way we can avoid this otherwise why says patanjali would mention in yoga sutra that one need to speak to the truth especially the students of yoga if you really want to grow so we'll discuss uh before we uh get into the topic we will start with a beautiful prayer and this prayer is from prayer is from bhagavatam so i would like to share the screen so uh this is the screen we will start with this beautiful prayer this prayer is from bhagavatam सत्य व्रत सत्य परम त्रिसत्यम सत्य सोनि निहित सत्ये सत्य मृत सत्यमूत्र नेत्र सत्यात्मक शरण प्रपन्न सत्यात्मक शरण प्रपन्न So in this prayer, 
this prayer is from Bhagavatam 10th chapter. The word Satya means the truth is mentioned nine times. And there is a beautiful story behind this prayer. If you know in the Bhagavad Gita where Lord declares, whenever there is unrighteousness spread in the society, at that time I take the human birth to remove the sufferings of the people and save the holy people. Yada yadahi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata. So this is the verse from the Bhagavad Gita. And here in this picture you can see uh, Lord Vishnu has appeared in the, in the prison where the parents of Lord Krishna was imprisoned by uncle of Lord Krishna, Kamsa. And if you know the story, Kamsa killed all the brothers of Lord Krishna. And uh, uh, also he killed many other people. And uh, when the Lord promised that I will take the human birth to save the people, and, before, and you see the tiny baby Krishna in that picture also. And uh, when Lord appeared, I'm saying Lord Vishnu appeared in the prison that I'm going to take birth from you, O Vasudeva and Devaki. And when Lord Vishnu appeared at that time, the saints and sages, the celestials, they, they came in the subtle form and they offered this prayer, O Lord. And the meaning that you read here, O Lord, your vow is truth that you promise to come whenever there is problem in the society and you have kept your promise. That is Satya Vratam. Satya Paramam, you are absolute truth, O God. In these three periods of time, you are the only truth. In all the relative truths, you are the cause and your basis is truth. You are the truth of all truths. Your two eyes are truth. It is Ruta and Satya. To that truth, we surrender. To that truth, we surrender. Satyatmakam tam saranam prapana. It's a wonderful prayer um, to... There are nine, the, the word truth is used nine times. So beautiful prayer to start with our discussion today. So here I'll stop the screen sharing. So what is truth? If I give you the definition of truth, in the Upanishad, it, it says, Sat eva somya eva atma. What is truth? It is a sat eva summe of atma. Atma or the soul is the only truth. That's the first definition. The second definition as per says Patanjali, what is truth? It is to speak the truth. To speak the truth, that is what says, when says Patanjali mentioned, um, in the Yoga Sutra, that is what he meant to speak the truth. Though there is ultimate truth we know, that is God, but here for our discussion we should be communicating in our day-to-day -day life which should be based on the truth. There are three types of uh, truths for our discussion. One is called apparent truth. Apparent truth, it is called mithya, means which seems to be existing, but it is not there. It is called apparent truth. For example, when you fly in the airplane, you are sitting in the plane and how 
the, what is the speed of the plane may be 500 miles per hour. But when you sit in the plane, you feel like it is floating. It is not moving that fast. Apparent truth. For example, if it is a hot, sunny day, you are driving on the road. On the road, sometimes you see there is water. It is not really water. It is the effect. It seems to be truth, but that is not the truth. So this is apparent truth or the mithya. Then the second one is called the relative truth. Relative truth, whatever we perceive through our senses, you can say all the scientific truths, that is the relative truth. It is there, but it is not there all the time. It is a relative truth. It is known, it is also called asatya. And the last one, the absolute truth, which is satya. What is absolute truth? Which is existing in three periods of time. Past, present and the future. And we know that except God, nothing exists in three periods of time. Everything will go one day. Even if you see this, this world, this universe will be gone sometime. It will not be there for always except God. So that's a God is called the absolute truth. So now to speak the truth, Guruji said, God has given us this mouth to speak. How do we really speak? Then he said, we should be really careful while using the tongue. Intelligently to use the tongue. And uh, Gurudev Paramahamsa Hariharanji said, you know why Mother Kali is putting her tongue out? Right, like that. Biting the tongue and tongue is out means control the tongue. If you look at all the senses that we have, mouth or the tongue has two functions, to eat and to speak. And if we are not careful while using this tongue, we, we can create lots of problems and difficulties in the life. Through tongue, we eat and speak. That is why it is said, So jiva na vasare yasya bhojane jalpane tatha. If anybody cannot control the tongue while speaking and eating, then it says, Bhavanti Dukhino Nityam means can create suffering and in on unhappiness and sad all the time. So Jivana Basari Yasya Bhojane Jalpane Tatha. So one should be extremely careful while using this tongue because the tongue has two aspects in our life. <coughs> Now, how do we express the truth? The simple meaning when we communicate whatever we perceive through our senses, we should be communicating as we have perceived through the senses. So here is an example I'll give you uh, many years back. In our Balegai Ashram, I remember probably 2005 or 6, Guruji asked somebody, Have you seen this person? He asked one senior monk, and the senior monk told Guruji, Guruji, he is in the kitchen. Guruji told him, Can you send somebody to call him? Immediately, that he said, Can you go and call him? And when he went to search the person, the person was not there in the kitchen. Then the Guruji was informed that he is not there in the kitchen. Guru said, how did you uh, tell that uh, he is in the kitchen? Oh, Baba, I saw he was walking towards the kitchen. Then Guruji said, you could have told me he was walking towards the kitchen. And what you told me, he is in the kitchen. 
This is not truth. Guru said, you have to be extremely careful while speaking, the, speaking any word. Then he said, if you do not speak the truth, you really cannot experience the truth. Speak as you have seen. Speak as you have seen. You know, many times um, we all do this mistake. You know, we, we speak about the Guru. Sometimes we, you know, while talking about the Guru, we add a lot of spices. Oh, Guru is like this, Guru is like that. And really our Gurudev or Guruji, they really don't like this. And one such incident happened in the life of Gurudev. When uh, Gurudev visited somebody's house. And Gurudev stayed there for one night. And a lot of people came to see Gurudev. And this person, the host, the disciple, you know, he's so excited, Gurudev is his home, and so many people are coming. He started giving a big lecture on Gurudev. Gurudev is inside the house, he's outside talking to the people. You know, my Gurudev, he doesn't eat. Look at his face, he looks so bright, but here he, he really doesn't eat, he meditates all the time. And he started giving, added, you know, a lot of spices into his discussion, whatever he was talking to the people. And after some time, people left. Then Guru, they packed his bag right away and about to leave the place. Then, uh, then the disciple of Guru, where are you going? Guru said, I'm leaving this place. But why you came to stay with us tonight? You're supposed to eat. But I know you're, you will not give me food because you just told that your Guru Dev doesn't eat, but I do eat. Then he begged, apologize Guru Dev, I'm so, so sorry for my mistake. So that is why when we communicate, we have to be very careful. And I have seen in the life of Sri Guruji, he will communicate exactly what he has seen or what he has felt. Nothing like telling like here and there where, where the person is completely confused. So whatever we perceive through the senses, you communicate in the same way. Sometimes the truth can vary from person to person. For example, if a person is suffering from jaundice, what the person would see, everything is yellow, but that is not the truth. That is not the truth. So to communicate in a proper way, sometimes our senses can be biased. But given the current situation where whatever, wherever you are, Whatever you communicate, whatever you perceive, communicate in the same way. But to speak the truth, one has to really grow in knowledge. One has to really grow in knowledge. Here I would like to give a beautiful verse from the Bhagavad Gita. Here Lord Krishna teaches how to communicate properly. In the 17th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, where Lord talks about there are three types of austerity. Austerity of body, austerity of speech, and austerity of mind. While talking about austerity, austerity of speech, here Lord Krishna said, very, very interesting and beautiful, he said, Anut Vega Karang Vakyam Satyam Priya Hitam Chayat. Anut Vega Karang Vakyam Satyang Priya Hitam Chaya. Very beautiful verse. So, in this verse, the first line, there are four conditions of speech. Whenever we communicate, it is said the four conditions. The first condition is it should be true. No false. Make sure that you speak the truth. That's the first condition. The second condition, it is said, it should be pleasant to hear. Not that you speak very badly, even if it is truth. It should be pleasant to hear. Priyam. Then it is said, it should benefit the person. It should benefit the person. Hitam. Then the fourth condition, it is said, 
it should not cause your speech should not cause any disturbance in the other person's mind it is called anudvega karang vakyam udvega udvega means um, tension sometimes we speak certain truth but it creates so much of tension in the mind of the person the person is completely confused the person is completely uh, disturbed you will say oh i told the truth how does it matter how he perceives no even if you speak the truth it should be pleasant to hear it should benefit the other person that these four conditions whenever we communicate and we should remember this udbega as i said udbega means creating tensions in the mind of the person and here is an incident that you might have heard the story from the from the mahabharata you know why the mahabharata war took place it is said it is because of the the word that was uttered by draupadi you know the you know the split between the, the two families the pandavas and kauravas finally the pandavas they were separated from their family and they lived in another kingdom called indraprastha and the indraprastha because lord krishna was involved in building that kingdom so he got lot of you know the architects like celestial architect like moya so he told this celestial architect moya you create a palace which is extremely beautiful and he created the palace and the palace was created in such a way you know there are some fake realities fake realities means for example you are walking in the palace it looks like a beautiful lawn as you walk in the lawn because there is there is no lawn but it look like lawn it looks like water when you walk into or when you are a little bit scared to go into the water but that's not not really water so 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 many people are invited duryodhana the son of dhritarashtra he was the king when he came and he saw saw this and he was very confused he thought there is water and he but he did while walking he lifted up his uh, you know uh, the dhoti he was the dress he was using but there is no water there and draupadi saw this and she started laughing and told the father is blind and look at the son he is behaving like blind and duryodhan heard this when duryodhan heard this he felt so bad extremely he was he was extremely upset and he left the kingdom with this promise that i will destroy this kingdom in any, any way so very careful while using the the word you might give a slap to the person the person might forget after some time but the hard word is very difficult to forget if people remember lives after lives guruji guruji said vak vai agni the speech is fire the speech is fire it should be used in a measurable way vak vai agni so here guruji said when you speak the truth so the two conditions he put is that speak in a loving manner and that will help to improve others that will help to improve others there is another beautiful prayer in the bhagavatam it is said satyam param dhimahi this is another beautiful prayer in the meditation pray this satyam param dhimahi let my mind always follow the path of truth let me let me not follow any path of falsehood let me not speak lie at any point of my time let me not speak no lie at any point of time sometimes to cover a little lie you know we tell many lies you know that way. so one young kid came home and when he came home mother asked him how come you are late today your your school was 
finished at four. How come you're like one hour late? Oh, mom, we had an extra class today. But your friend came at four o'clock. You are searching for you. He said, there is no extra class. Oh, mom, no, he's a lazy guy. He doesn't do that, attend the class. See, he, just to cover one lie, there is a series of lies. So you have to be very, very careful, especially if you don't want to speak the truth, you do the Khachari Mudra. Till I'm practicing Kriya, I don't want to speak any truth. In another inc interesting incident that, that happens to us most of the time, many times it has happened to me before at least. When you live in the ashram, especially if, when I lived in India, people ask about uh, the whereabouts of Guruji. Where is Guruji now? Even if you know, you can't say. You can't speak it. If you speak Guruji in the ashram, you're in trouble. I remember, you know, I was in the office working in India, uh, 2008, seven or eight, one of this, this year. So uh, Guruji came back after his uh, trip, he came to Balikai ashram. And uh, Guruji called me from inside ashram. He said, look, anybody look for me, tell that I'm not here. Then uh, immediately I told Guruji, Baba, then, then I have to tell lie, means Baba is not here. Guru said, you are a fool. You don't know how to speak, you don't know how to communicate. If you want to speak the truth, you have to be very intelligent. Simply tell the person Guruji is in seclusion. You are not telling anything. Okay, that was, that was easy for me to answer. So I told people that people is in seclusion. Another person called. And to that person, a Guruji really wanted to meet for some, some urgent work. And the person called, simply I told Guruji in seclusion. And the person was a little disturbed because he really wanted to meet. And he knew that Guruji in the ashram. So he collected the information from some other sources. And um, then finally Guruji came to know that I have told that person Guruji is in seclusion. I got another call from Guruji. Got a big scolding. I wanted to meet that person. Why did you tell him that I am in seclusion? And uh, I said, um, I could not tell anything. I kept quiet because I know that when Guru calls, you should keep quiet. And I didn't. Uh, but but the, inwardly, I was talking to myself that, Baba, you are the one who told me that I am in seclusion. How do I know that you wanted to meet? It? I didn't speak to Guruji, but inside I was thinking like this. Then I did not know, was it my fault? Then I realized after some time, if you have the true surrender to the wish of the master, you will know how to communicate. But Guruji said that, when you want to speak the truth, you have to be extremely smart and intelligent. But most of the time what happens, because when we are discussing this topic, can we really speak the truth and survive in this world? They said, if I speak the truth, I'll be in big trouble. It is not really true. We are walking in a certain pedestal. And we want to see what is there in the, after a few steps. So we have to take few steps up. Means start living slowly an honest life. In our day-to-day -day communication, speak the truth. And as you start living this kind of life, after some time, you will find it is not so easy. It is not so difficult to live a truthful life. It is, it, there is possibility. Again, another uh, thought in me, talking about uh, because Guruji always encouraged us to speak the truth. And uh, in those, in one of these year, in 2007 or 8, we had an orientation camp in the ashram. The orientation camp was to speak the truth. So Guruji encouraged all of us to stand and to speak your experience about how to communicate or how to speak the truth. And I remember um, there was a Brahmachari, he's a monk now. 
when his turn came he stood up and as he started to speak he started crying very bitterly very bitterly he cried every one of us is there so why he started crying then he said one interesting thing he said i am such a fool guru ji ji asking me it, the incident happened few days before guru ji enquired something about him but repeatedly he was covering the truth he is not speaking the truth and guru ji knew the truth as a guru he knew what is happening inside you and he realized his mistake and he started crying so bitterly that i am such a fool in the presence of the guru i am trying to spit the lie but the guru knows everything so we have to be extremely careful while uttering any word guru ji said don't say any manipulative truth don't say any manipulative to speak as you have seen speak as you have seen so talking discussing on this topic i would like to share one more screen this is a very beautiful uh, another uh, teachings of the upanishad the teaching where the not this one hold on this one so when we communicate we should remember so this beautiful prayer where the the rishi is teaching the guru is teaching the disciple how to speak he said satyam bruyat priyam bruyat na bruyat satyam apriyam priyam cha nanrutam bruyat esha dharma sanatana esha dharma sanatana and you see the translation which says uh, speak truth and speak sweetly speak sweet no harsh truth no sweet lies no sweet lies so uh, how to communicate make sure whenever we speak speak the truth don't speak the harsh truth it is not helping the person to grow and at the same time in the name of speaking sweetly don't speak the lie don't speak the lie so very careful while communicating so here is the harsh truth one example and this is an incident happened in india there are there is a couple they were newly married they are newly married and they were uh, um, in in some books a book exhibition they are looking at the books there are, there are many stalls probably you have seen and this uh, this couple they are going from you know uh, stall to stall to look at the books and the the newly married girl she happened to see an elderly person whom she knew before and uh, this person saw this girl he was very happy happy to see you and uh, he uh, he saw her husband is standing next to next to her and this elderly person called this girl because he knew i am getting some question maybe i will answer at the end um so the, uh, this elderly person called this newly married girl Hey, I want. I want to ask you one question. Please come. What do you want? He said, "I know you from many years, and you are such a beautiful girl. Why did you marry to this bald-headed person? Why did you marry to this bald-headed person? Just imagine the situation. What would have What would have happened to this newly married girl? She was already married." she is living with her husband and you are telling telling her that 
why did you marry to this bald headed bald headed person because you are so beautiful the girl just could not say anything silently she left left and she must have suffered for a long time she must have suffered for a long time you will say what is wrong he told the truth but is it sweet even if the person spoke the truth but how badly it hurt the person extremely careful it is said that no sweet lies many times i have seen the parents also while talking to the to the children they speak something which is not based on the truth sometimes out of fun out of joke we tell many we tell many lies even if we can we can tell nice joke can be based on truth i remember the sankaracharya of puri he said in hindi he said binod mein bhi jhoot nahi bolna chahiye even out of fun not to speak the lies why because we get habituated and for anything small 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 and big we just tell the blatant lies even even out of fun we should not be telling the lies especially if we really want to grow in the spiritual path as a student of yoga so as shankara chara said binod mein bhi jhoot nahi bolna chahiye even in the joke not to tell the lies and here is an incident the true incident happened in the life of our gurudev gurudev was there um, in the karar ashram many years back you know a lot of people usually came and uh, one uh, mother and her young son came when the young son saw gurudev he the young son may be 6 7 years old um he told he asked a gurudev gurudev how come you have long beard and uh, gurudev said oh i don't have money to cut the beard gurudev just told this out of fun so they went back this little boy he wanted to come to meet gurudev again after a few months the boy came with the mother and uh, in fact the, the little boy cried in front of the parents give me some money i'll give to gurudev because he doesn't have money to cut his beard and he got some money and he gave that money to gurudev gurudev here is the money you can go to the barber and do a nice shave and gurudev said gurudev said this is a lesson for me even out of joke i told this but the little boy took it very seriously guru said this is a good lesson for me that i should be extremely careful i should be extremely careful in my life so out of joke also not to tell the lie and as guru said you have to be very conscious you have to be very conscious while communicating anything from your mouth just by telling one lie don't take it very seriously this is a story from the mahabharata just telling one lie you know king yudhishthira told half a lie for that half a lie he had to face some time in the hell and we know the story that because he told one lie he has to pass through the hell you can say this is an analogy to understand but the truth is when we speak any lie in our heart we know the truth because this is based on lie you know every karma has its impact negative or positive whatever we speak whenever we speak any lie it has its own impact on our life not just to to see the hell that is just an analogy but we might be unhappy for some time we might be sad for some time because you told something lie so we have to be very extremely careful while talking and speaking and there is another beautiful verse which guru ji communicated to us it is called apri apri yasya cha satyasya shrota vakta tacha durlabha it means it is very difficult to find who can speak the unfailable truth 
who can speak the harsh truth and it is very difficult to find who can digest that truth. Right? Apri, apriya means the harsh, harsh truth. Should we speak the harsh truth? Answer is definitely no. But if you are a parent, if you have the children, if the children is doing something wrong, you should speak the harsh truth to help the person to grow. Basically, the idea is what is the intention behind? That matters. If the guru seeing the person, seeing the fault in the disciple, cannot speak the truth, then who will, who will correct the person? So it is said that the parents and the guru are given the authority to speak the harsh truth. Very, very careful. Here says Patanjali is encouraging us. As a student of yoga, please speak the truth. When you speak the truth always, what will happen? So there is a benefit you get when you speak the truth. And the sutra that says Patanjali talks in the Yoga Sutra, it is said, Satya Pratishthayam Satya Pratishthayam Kriya Phala Ashrayatvam Satya Pratishthayam Kriya Phala Ashrayatvam means when a person is established in truth, what will happen? The action and the result of action, action and the result of action, a rest on the action. What does it mean? It means when you speak the truth, whatever you say that will come truth, that will be true. It is said that when you speak the truth for 12 years, and you achieve some siddhi, some perfection, it is known as vak siddhi. Whatever you utter, that will be true. That's why many times we want to hear from Guruji, okay, let Guruji tell this. Or because we believe that here is a person who speaks truth all the time. Whatever the person can say, that will be true. If the person says this will happen to you, means this will happen to you. There is no way it can be denied. Why? Because the person has practiced, the person has spoken the truth for his entire life. And there are, there are, there are number of incidents that happened in the life of many people. Here I'll just tell you one incident, then, uh, then I'll stop for discussion today because it's already 10.45 is going to be. There was a person he lived, I believe, till 1980s, something like that, 80s or 90s. Everybody died in their family. So eventually he became a, not became a monk, but living like that kind of life. Very austere life, meditating, praying all the time. He was moving from place to place. One day he happened to be in somebody's family. And people knew his spiritual status. A lot of people came to see him. One old mother came. She came with this request. Oh, adorable holy person. I have a strong desire to see God. Will you please bless me? He heard this. But he didn't really pay attention. But she was behind him. Please bless me. I want to have the vision of God. When she bothered few times, then the person just told, okay, do one thing. From today, for one year, you see this place, because outside of their house, there is a small baranda in a small, like cemented platform. And there was a tulsi uh, plant. Said, okay, clean this place for one year. Then we'll see what happens. And he left. The lady started cleaning that place for one year. After one and a half year, the, the person came back to the same family. And the lady came and told that you told me that uh, 
I will have the vision of God if I clean this place, I clean for a whole year, nothing happened to me. Then the person just waited for a moment. Then he said, look, I know myself. I have never uttered any lie in my life. You tell me, did you really clean this place for one year? Okay, that is the condition I put for you. Because you are not really ready to have the vision of God. Because you requested me, that's why I told this. Then the lady said, I remember a few months back, I was very sick. For a few days, I could not clean that place. He said, look, it means some of your karma did not allow you to clean this place for one year so that you will have vision of God. So you have to be ready for that. That Satya Pratishthayam Kriya Phala Ashrayatam Guruji said, when you meditate, when you pray sincerely for years after years, you get some power. Without your knowledge, that power can come to you. That is why if you are a meditator, if you are a Kriya one, you have to be extremely careful. You have to be extremely careful while uttering any word. While uttering any word. So, Satya Pratishthayam Kriya Phala Ashram. That is the benefit which says Patanjali discussing in Yoga Sutra. So here I will stop uh, for the meditation. So I got this uh, question that uh, um, why Guruji scolded me when he encouraged me to speak the truth, he told me what to do. That is how the, the beauty of living in a master, right? When I, Guruji told me, tell people I am in seclusion. I told the person Guruji in seclusion. But again I got the scolding. Why? Because Guruji wanted to meet the, meet, meet the person. Now the question is, when various people call me, if, if I have the true surrender, when I heard that person looking for Guruji, I would get some feeling within this person who wants to meet Guruji. And Guru said, if you want to speak the truth, you have to be very smart and intelligent. Instead of communicating in a harsh way, Guruji and seclusion, I would have communicated in some nice way. Because I lack true surrender at the feet of the master that I could not communicate. But if you try to find the reasoning here, there is no reason. There is no reason. Another reason could be why Guruji is called it. Because he will test your mind. Even there is nothing wrong, still you get the scolding. He will give you the scolding and he will observe how is your mind, how you reacted to the situation. If you reacted to Guruji's words, means you are not yet ready. That is what he said. When Guru scolds you, don't take it very lightly, don't take it very deeply. When you take it very deeply, you may do some mistake, you may commit some other mistake. You may leave the ashram and go somewhere. Don't take it very lightly. Don't take it very lightly. You have to find a proper balance when the Guru is called for something. However, so the point of discussion, what I'm trying to communicate today, says Patanjali while talking on Yama aspect. The five Yamas, the second aspect is the truth. In our day-to-day -day communication, be conscious while speaking not to speak any kind of lies, even in the joke. Try to be conscious about it. And when, because you want to grow in the spiritual path. And when you follow this, and you will realize the beauty of life. And the spiritual growth can be really fast. Okay. So with this much of discussion, I will uh, uh, stop it. I'm just saying... Uh, if we are kind and friend to someone who do not really want to have a friendship with them for no life. So basically, the what I said, like, uh, Satyam Bruyat, speak the truth. And that should help others to grow. And speak sweetly also, not that very harshly. You just do your duty and how the person accepts it is up to the person.
Okay, there are some more questions. I don't want to take more time. So it's already 10.50. So um, thank you so much for listening to the talk. Uh, let us close our eyes for a short meditation today. Wherever you are sitting, sit with the spine straight, close your eyes. Observe the breath. In between the two eyebrows, each inhalation, each exhalation, observe with love. Concentrating in between the two eyebrows, please take a deep breath. Inhale, hold, slowly bend and bow. And exhale. Take another deep breath, inhale, hold, slowly sit back and exhale. Let us pray to God, pray to the Gurus to give us inner strength so that we speak the truth. Sometimes while communicating any truth, if it is very harsh, Either you be silent or talk or communicate in such a way, the person realizes what is the truth. But not to hurt the heart of the person, because ultimately the person will not change his life or her life. So Upanishad says, speak truth. Speak lovingly. Don't speak harsh truth. No sweet lies. Not to tell lie out of joke or fun. Let us realize, let us practice these great lessons from the saints and sages and apply in our life.
Thank you all. Thank you for participating in the discourse today. I bow to all of you. Thank you so much. I hope I answered all your questions. The last question also I answered. Thank you so much.